Those two already got their life sentences. Mm -hmm. I know what's coming. For a split second, while they're delivering, I was like, who knows? They might come back with a second. That was really foolish thinking. When I was sentenced, none of my family okay. members were in the courtroom. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host, B. Luke. I got a special guest with me today. Why don't you tell the people your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. First off, thanks Bobby for having me. My name is Joshua Halbert. I'm from Gloucester, Mass. I'm a 53-year-old man. I just served 35 years. I was at one point doing a natural life sentence without parole and the law changed in 2013 for the 68 juvenile lifers and uh, I was just recently released October 19th of last year. And the law changed what year? 2013, Dayachenko versus Massachusetts. Why did it take so long? Is it parole? Did you see parole every yeah, year? Or I saw, to, I saw parole. My, my first parole hearing was in 2014. I got a four-year setback because of my past history of when I started my sentence. And then I got a three-year setback. I saw them in 2018 and then 2021. They gave me a one-year setback in 2021. When I saw them again in 2022, I was already at Pawnville at a minimum. And then I was granted parole January 19th. 2023. I'm well, glad you made it. I'm glad, Thanks, glad you made it. Thank you to tell your story. Thank so you. let's just rewind a little bit. Tell the people about what's Gloucester like. I know they got a heavy fisher, fishing they thing do. going I on mean, there. I mean, well, I'm not originally from Gloucester. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, I don't, you know, I'm not proud of this. I was born in New York and uh, I lived there to the age of four. My mom and my dad were, my dad's from New York. My mom is from Florida. Lived there to the age of four and then moved down to Florida when I was about four years old with my mom. That was a struggle. You know, my mom was a serious, serious uh, heroin addict. She couldn't take care of herself, let alone a hyperactive kid. So lived with family in and out of foster homes okay. up until about 10, 11 years old. And then I moved up here with my aunt in okay. 1981. She took me in, my, her and my cousin Brian. Talk a little bit about what's what were foster homes like back then? Well, you know, the foster parents that I had, I had several of them. You know, it was all just about getting that check. As long as there was food on the table, you know, and clothes on us, they didn't really care, you mm -hmm. know. And sometimes, because this is down in Miami, you know, most of the time I was in foster homes where only white kid in the whole neighborhood, yeah. you know, scraps every day, stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just a little kid, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It wasn't a good parental environment. Right for any of us kids that were in the foster home, so. Yeah, the couple yeah. people that I talk to, they always say they just pretty much go from one bad environment to yeah. another. It's yeah. really, you know, just the different faces. Yeah. So eventually you come up here to Massachusetts, and is that when you come to Gloucester? Yeah, yeah, okay. I came to Gloucester in middle of 81. Okay, so mom is from Florida, dad's from New York. Is yeah. there anybody you know when you guys come up here as far as well, family? It was, well, my aunt took custody of me. Came up by myself mm -hmm. and I moved in with her. My cousin Brian, who's four years older than me, and okay. the only cousin I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, my mom only, only one child. You know, okay. I broke the mold. She's like, yeah, you're all set. We're not having another mm -hmm. kid, you know. My aunt's living boyfriend at the time, Peter, he pulled up lobster traps, okay. you know, and uh, when I first got up here, because we lived right on the back of a cove where do boats part, uh, docked their boats mm -hmm. in that were all lobster boats, yeah. you know. So that's a, you know, one hills. There was mm -hmm. I've never been around hills in my entire life because right. down in Miami, it's just straight flat, flat mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it was it was a good time, yeah. you know. I got to learn how to sew up the nets in the lobster traps. I yeah. went out with my uncle. Made a little, you know, a little cash here and there, you know, mm -hmm. helping out pulling up the lobster traps. I remember my first day up here, my cousin, you know, four years older than me, you know, we went out, you know, and I, this wasn't my first introduction to getting high, mm -hmm. you know, but we went out and smoked a little weed and went to the quarries, mm -hmm. you know, and I almost drowned my first day here because oh, I've never gosh. been in fresh water. <laughs> it's a little you know? different. Yeah. You know, you get the giggles in the middle of the quarry. I was literally drowning. Guys, oh, like, geez. listen, Brian, you know, is that your cousin in the middle of the quarry drowning? Wow. Right? Yeah, I got to go save him. So. so it seems like you went from a bad environment to at least a better environment when you came up here. Is that it, how you felt at the time? Absolutely. Okay. But as the product of where I just came from in my history, I look back on it now and I know 
I had I had a lot of issues going on. Did you on. have trouble fitting in when you started going to schools and stuff? Absolutely. Like that? I was always in the LD classes, man. Okay. You know, I was you know I was always a little a little slow. The attention span. I didn't want to sit in class. Yeah. You know, and once I started making friends and when I first got up here, it was always about I was insecure with myself, mm -hmm. so it felt even better. Smoke a little weed, yeah. drink. You could feel secure with yourself, and I felt like I could be me, you know. So that started taking part in my life. Did that become a problem? To a certain degree, yeah. yeah. It was a hard thing to do to go find weed at 12, 13 years right, old, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> and definitely can't go find booze. We'd mm -hmm. raid fr friends' families, you know, fr fr friends' uh, liquor cabinets. Yeah. Because no one's going to sell a 13-year-old liquor in front of the packy no, store, yeah, you know. Exactly. Not going to happen. <laughs> Not going to happen, you know. Okay. But uh, I'd run away. You know, my aunt took me in. And I've said it all along, even at every parole hearing. God bless her, because she's a yeah. sweetheart. And she didn't know what she was getting into. She looks back on it now and says, you know what? You had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. You know, there was trauma that took place in a couple of foster homes. Yeah. You know, that, you know... I didn't realize that they would resonate or I was holding it in mm -hmm. and not talking about it, right. you know, and, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? My insecurities with myself yeah. and with people, especially adults, I, I kept things in. I didn't want to, you know, so I held that in and that was my, you know, my outlet was mm -hmm. just to get, you know, get high and hang out with my friends and, you know, start running away, yeah. you know, taking off, you know, for days. You know, I went to two special camps in uh, Hillsborough, New Hampshire. And how old were you when you were, like, taking off and for days, not coming back? 13, 14. So you must have been driving your aunt kind of a little crazy yeah. with that? Yeah, I did. Gave her ulcers. Dude. You know, and it didn't help matters that, you know, that's my cousin's mom. Mm -hmm. And not realizing that. He just went through his own thing when he moved up here. Now she's taking on the responsibility of a hyperactive kid who is acting like a little punk. She had to neglect him. So there was resentment from him mm -hmm. towards me. I didn't realize, I didn't know that until later on in life. Okay. You know, so he would get pissed off at me, you know, and there would be scrapes and I always came out at the bad end of it because mm -hmm. he's four years older, a kid oh, worked yeah. out all the time. So <laughs> it is what it yeah. is, you know, I get it. It sucks, and she didn't real like I said, she didn't realize what she was getting, she was getting into. Because I didn't even realize how screwed up I was. Right. So you were just normal at that point. You yeah. don't realize until you get older and look back like, damn, that yeah. was kind of messed up. 100%. Man. How were you as far as a student? I know you said you'd fall behind a little bit, but what about your behavior? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, you know, eventually I got kicked out of, you know, I, I couldn't go to the junior high. Mm -hmm. I had to go to the alternative school, yeah, you yeah. know, and it was a it was a it was a more structured base, you know, because it would be like 10 kids and there's four teachers right. throughout the whole day. You know, I would get the work done. But then when we were done with school or when we'd have a lunch break, go out. Mm -hmm. Smoke a little weed, 13, 14 years right. old. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's you just... don't realize, too, the long term effect that that's having on the brain when we get into smoking weed and drinking at such a young age, yeah. your brain's still developing. I was on, I think I was maybe a month and a half, two months mm -hmm. premature. Okay. Mom, mom was shooting yeah. up heroin the whole time when she was pregnant with me. Yeah. So I already came into the world with yeah. one thing, one, one mock against me. Yep. You know, not real. I didn't know that till I was a teenager. Right. That she did that. But that so. seems to be a common theme when I have people up here, the whole broken home thing. Not yeah. everybody. Some people just gravitate towards maybe doing crime or whatever. But a yeah. lot of us come from those that broken home, you know, and it seems like what your father wasn't in the picture. No, I, ain't seen dad, I haven't seen dad since I was six. OK. Yeah. When do you start getting in trouble with the law? Do you? Well, get to have any juvenile probation well, or anything like no, that or is it just no, I didn't okay I literally I remember I was like 1984 I was about I just turned 14 we there's some summer houses near our house in Gloss right mm -hmm. so it's, it's going towards Lanesville going towards Rockport and uh a few of us broke into the summer houses not to steal 
but to sleep. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And we got pinched for it. That was like breaking an entry, yeah. trespassing, basically. Slap you on know? the wrist. Yeah, basically. I got sent to, um, where's the, play, the DYS place? It's in Somerville. I think it's off of Bridge Street. It was a place where we'd stay. It's like a Cross de- street. I forget. I don't yeah, know. That was that, a while ago. Too, yeah, so yeah. But that was a long yeah. time ago, right? But I stayed there for like a month and then went to a foster home and okay. then for a little while and then went to a program. And now, when you go to this juvenile, the DYS, is that already kind of like, are you used to that environment? Is it similar to like foster homes and group homes or is it a little mm-hmm. different? No, it's different because we were in a secure building. You couldn't really leave, mm-hmm. you know, and it was it was only for 30 days. Right. You know, it was until we had the court case pending. It mm-hmm. wasn't like I got sent to Westfield Detention Center or right. the Brockton Y or Rosendale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. It wasn't a serious. It was for guys that transitioning to go to court and what's going on with them, and yeah. then they would move them on. Yeah. But I got sent literally. I went to a residential school from 1985 to 1986 for a year in Danvers. Okay. Yeah, called IFO Institute for for Family Life and Learning. So now is that something where you come out? Are you still going to court for that? Do you end up getting probation? Or is I date dismissed. dismissed. They dismissed. Yeah, okay. I wasn't really a troublemaker. Mm-hmm. I didn't really try to. I didn't really break the law. Right. You know, until later on, before my crime happened, mm-hmm. I came back. You know, I'll get into that. Mm-hmm. In '86, my aunt got tired of my shenanigans. Okay. You know, my my. Me being, you know, I would, I'm 15 at this time, and mm-hmm. I basically just came home once, once or twice a week, and other times I was just out on my own. Yeah. So where, what were you like? Where were you sleeping that night? If you come, friend, all friends my friends' house? houses, okay. friends' houses in summertime, mm-hmm. we pass out on the beach. Yeah, just break you know, daylight, stay up. Yeah, alive. absolutely. You. you know, just wanted to party with my friends. No, when you say party, what kind of things were you guys doing? Is just, just drinking, drinking and smoking, and at the smoking time? weed. You yeah, know, no never, hard drugs. No, 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 no coke, nothing mm-hmm. like that. Um, occasional, you know, drop some acid. Okay. But you know, it was. I look back on it now. It was the teenage years of just. Yep. You know, I wasn't really into hardcore drugs. Yeah. You yeah. Know? A lot of t- teenagers at that age, even people who grew up to never have any trouble with the law, that's what they're doing, yeah. drinking and smoking. Exactly. It's kind of like a normalized Like a thing. rite of passage for teenagers. Essentially. Some, most teenagers, yeah. not all of right. them, but... It's not know? out of the ordinary for that to be yeah. going on at that, those ages. Uh, Do you end up finishing high school? No, no, okay. no. I, uh, my aunt said I got tired. She got... You know, me running away so much, I had to go, I had to get sent back down to Florida. Stay at my How do you feel about that situation? When, Because now you probably have at least a couple friends and now you're taken away from your whole it life sucked. back to Florida. It sucked because mm-hmm. that's all I know is up here now, right? Mm-hmm. All, I had to go to a foster home right when I got down there. My grandparents already raised three kids. They didn't want a sick, not only a 16-year-old, but I inherited, my mom was the black sheep. So I inherited that mantle. You know, and they didn't want the troubled teenager there. And I uh, went to a foster home, and I mean, I was calling all my friends when I was down there. I mean, I ran this, I call- ran this poor lady's phone bill up within like a couple of weeks, like astronomical. Calling all my up friends here. up yeah. here, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How, does this build like resentment towards your family, towards your grandparents? Because I, I assume at that age you don't really understand it. Maybe the way you do now, like. Yeah, I get where they're coming from. They raised their kids. They raised, yeah. you know, I'm just at the grandkid, time, but at the time, yeah. Well, they let me stay with them. I got kicked out of that foster home, so they took me in for about six months. Now, how do you get no. kicked out of a foster home? Well, what me and a foster, we are, well, one, one, the phone bill. Two, <laughs> I got into a fight with one of the foster brothers. I found out, I because we weren't allowed to, I wasn't allowed to smoke in the house. Mm-hmm. So I go outside, and I get a whole bunch of concert shirts. And I noticed that one of my concert shirts, I see, I noticed... It's on fire. It was it was like burnt. I was like, what the? and I'm the only again the only white kid in the whole neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know, my whole foster my foster parent. You know, and I was like, really? So I wait. I said, you know what? I'm gonna wait because he's not doing it. He's not taking something out of there when I'm up all day and I'm mm-hmm. not in school yet. So I waited at night and you know he came creeping in the bedroom and I we just started brawling and we went through the sheetrock because all all it is is sheetrock. Yeah. We went through the sheetrock of the bedroom into the bathroom. So we went through both sides. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wild. You know, and his fa- his other buddy, you know, they both bundled me a little bit, but mm. the foster mother said, "Yeah, you're out of here." My grandparents <laughs> paid for the bill. Yeah. So when you go to a foster home like that, is there 
cases where they have their biological kids there too? They no, were... these were all foster kids. Okay. okay. You know, they were the fo they were foster brothers of, of, okay. of the home. So I didn't really, I've, not, I've had that happen when I was younger mm -hmm. where it was the actual, they had biological kids there too. Okay. So. And obviously they're going to favor those their kids more nah, than others, well, that's would, where the, that's, that's where the past would... trauma comes from mm, you know okay. and i was still holding that in yeah. so uh, so your grandmother takes you in after that incident yeah yeah okay yeah. waiting for a bed in another foster home okay so it was just my a mom, transitional thing. yeah my grandparents were there my mom lived there at the time mm -hmm. and me and her were able to bond then i mean i laid into her i laid the guilt trip on her and you know I'm, I'm 16 years old. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I got a lot of resentment towards her. Yeah. And we hashed it out. You know, it was deep, bawling eyes out conversations. She's already been off of the heroin for a long time, but she just substituted it with vodka. Yeah. It was, a, it was, I didn't want to leave. You know, not for nothing. I mean, yeah. I was a spoiled brat there. I got mm -hmm. whatever I wanted. My grandparents live in Coral Gables in Miami, right? We're five minutes away from the University of Miami. Okay. You know, that's why I'll always represent the U. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Hurricanes. Yeah, right. Any, yeah, exactly. Any <laughs> other teams, I'm all, I'm all Boston. But, okay, got you. All right. Yeah, and then I, I had to leave. I was, so I was bummed, but I, I had the resentment towards them, mm -hmm. but I didn't, re I, I think it was more like I was sad over it. I didn't want to, I wasn't angry. I was like, why don't you want me? You know, I'm doing good. I'm help. I mean, I don't. I'm not, I have. I made maybe one friend since I've been down there. Because mm -hmm. one, I don't have a license. Mm -hmm. Two, they wouldn't let me go to school. I met somebody that was from New Hampshire at, at the mall, dude, and I hit it off. And that was the only friend I had for a while. Yeah. You know, and I had to go to a foster home, which yeah. I guess. And what's that? More of the same? When you no, go it was actually a pretty good setting. It was more of a group home setting. They had like three acres in their backyard. Oh, they okay. had. They they had. A horse, right? They had a little wow. stable. It was a, it was a ranch house, okay. you know, and it was a a collective of different kids living there from like eight to eighteen, and I had to go to school, mm -hmm. you know, which was a trip and a half because I went in what eight March March of eighty seven. Got there and met a few friends there, and then within a couple like not even a week, dude. I didn't go to school. I just skipped. Or just you know, control. found some friends, all the stoners, wherever mm -hmm. the smoking area, uh, all the metal heads, you know, yeah. and just started bake, baking and having a good time and not going to school. And then eventually they, what, they don't let you come back to school? I was, when they found out, the foster parents found out that, you know, they got paperwork saying I, I missed a whole year, basically. Jeez. And they said, you're grounded for the summer. You I said, really? Been. I just packed my stuff and left. Okay. And then what happened I from there? Went, Where you... I went to... My girlfriend's place for a little while. Her parents weren't keen on the idea, mm -hmm. but slept on the couch a little bit. And then I was basically on my own since then, you know, living at friends' houses, creeping, basically breaking in the cars and stealing out of cars. I never yeah. broke into a house, never stuck up a store or anything right. like that. We'd wait till nighttime. And you ever get caught up down there with the law? I, for How about this? For trespassing again. Boy. On a school grounds in the middle of the night. You know, it was, it, I don't even know why we, we, we were cutting through. And the kid I was with, like, oh, let's go this way. And we had to hop over a fence and walk through the hallways of the school. And all of a sudden, the cops are there. Is that something you had to go to court for? Or yeah, just... I had to go to court. And I went to a, um, a drug rehab, mm. Key West Memorial Hospital down in Key West. I didn't finish that. Do you, did you feel <laughs> like you even had to be there? Or was it just was, at that point, it's a place to, to stay? Stay, because yeah. I, was I, was, I wasn't on the streets. So when is it from there to when do you come back up? Massachusetts. Okay, How I'm in I'm in Fort Lauderdale from March until I want to say mid July of mm -hmm. '88 because I thumbed back up here in July of '88. How's that work? You just I uh, went to the um the rest areas mm -hmm. in Fort Lauderdale and got a ride from Fort Lauderdale to Daytona. Waited for another you know just asking people when they pull up, hey you are you headed north? Get a ride to Daytona. Then from Daytona to Richmond, Virginia. And these Rich. people were just what they well, just willing like, to have. They wanted well, to have they, company. I mean, that, yeah, you didn't I mean, have no money was, for them. It was, was it was um, a family that took me one time, a couple, and the last ride was a guy from Richmond, Virginia, all the way to Springfield, Mass. Yeah, and Springfield's kind of out there, and then yeah, but then I got a I 
I got a couple of rides from somebody. I was on the back of a mo- motorcycle for a little bit. Wow. And then, because I just stuck out my thumb right when the, the on-ramps, because if you go on the highway, you're going to get, yeah. you know, you're not allowed to. And yeah. I got a ride from, I forget where it was. That's I can't wild. remember the exact spot in Mass, but all the way to my aunt's doorstep. Gloucester. Two o'clock in the morning. I wasn't. I wasn't going near that. I wasn't going downstairs and knocking on the door. Okay. Because my mom was living up here with her at the time. I was like, Yeah, I'm not doing that. No way. So I waited. I went down to the boulevard. You know where the statue is. The guy at the wheel. Right. Mm-hmm. Been down. I was hanging out there. I called my buddy Mark. Said, Can you pick me up? What do you mean pick you up? <laughs> I said, I'm in Mass now. Oh. He's like, What? I said, Yeah. I went to see my mom and my aunt a couple of days later. My aunt's like, Listen, you're not staying here. And by law, you shouldn't even be back up here. You're supposed to be down in Florida. Right. I said, All right, all right, that's cool. You know, I stayed at friends' houses here and there. And how long does that last? Just bouncing around? Yeah. All together, two months. You know, what are you um, doing for, for money? Not really working. Mm-hmm. Just what, whatever <laughs> I you did can get do. a job. My buddy, my buddy, my good friend Billy Gothia, he's his whole family moved up to Cherryfield, Maine. Okay. And Billy, Dave, Mike, and Rob Gothia, real good friends. They're like, listen, we're going back up to the Maine. You know, me and Billy thumbed from Gloucester to Maine. Mm-hmm. Cherryfield's okay. past Bangor. I want to backtrack a little bit because sure. I, uh, when I was in Fort Lauderdale, some crimes. Yeah. Sure. You know, nothing I'm not proud of, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes you got to survive. And, you know, you got the strip in Fort Lauderdale and the cars drive around. It's called Birch Road. That's where the kids hustle. Sometimes you get in the car with a dude, listen, you get the money up front, get it, either screw, or if they try mm-hmm. to stop, you hit it. Wow. I did a lot of robbing like that, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, that was my means of, you know, having the hotel room if I can, mm-hmm. or some food in the stomach, yeah. you know? And uh, How do you sleep at night at that point? Do you, are you just like, man, I'm doing what I got to do and it's not even a second thought or do you feel some sort of guilt towards it? I wasn't feeling it at the time because it was just a means of survival. They weren't going to go report it because how are you going to go explain that you're picking up a young man? It's like the perfect setup for something like that. Exactly, exactly. And it's obviously not the way to go in life to do that. No, not at all. But, you know, at that time, it was the means of survival. Right. But that never ended up coming um, back to you? Like anybody try to mess you up, violence no. or anything like that? You kind of no. just no. did what you had to do, skated. Like you said, they're not going to go to the cops. So exactly. If you, if you no one did. No, or... nah. yeah, they weren't going to go report that some young man, well, what happened? Right. Why are you in this part of the right. picking up yeah, young yeah. men? You know, there was no way, you know, it was like the perfect, unfortunately, the perfect opportunity right. to do that without any yeah. ramifications, okay. you know, and, uh, so you yeah, get back up here. Yeah. When I got up, we came back down to Gloucester, you know, I got a good friend, Johnny, one, that's one of my other co-defendants and, mm-hmm. uh, my other co-defendant, Kevin, you know, it's a school night, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into details of the, of the, the crime, yeah. but we needed a place to party, you know, and Kevin knew a guy, knew a guy that was yay. And, he would supply us with booze, you know, and, you know, we're in Riverdale Park, you know, he told you, said, Josh, you remember what you used to do? And I'm going to use a term that I don't like saying, mm-hmm. said, you remember what you used to do down at Fort Lauderdale? Roll fast, mm. you know, and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, it's been a while. And, well, this guy's that way. I said, all right, whatever, man, as long as we get to drink, you know, and as we were leaving Riverdale Park, all three of us. I remember Billy Gothia, God rest his soul, he passed away in 2017. He uh, he walked by and said, Josh, let's go. I'm going back to Mary's house, right? We're going to go back to Maine tomorrow. You know, you know Bobby, I, f- I found a spiritual life in me now, right? That, you know, I will talk about mm-hmm. that, you know, I look back on it. Dude, God was put in that, in a, put in him there for a reason to ask me, let's go back. Right. You know, I didn't think about it at that time, mm-hmm. but obviously doing soul searching. You and had that out. You can't say you didn't like have an out. Right? Exactly, like, exactly. There was an out right there and not knowing that it was, you know, that lifeline was getting thrown to me. Right, you know? obviously. And hindsight's twenty twenty. Exactly, at the time, you know? exactly, exactly. And long story short, a man's life was taken that night yeah. in a very brutal 
way. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. It is. You know, and I wish, and I've said it, I'll always say it, I've, you know, I take full responsib responsibility for my actions. Mm -hmm. You know, I took part of this. And uh, I wish I could switch. Mm -hmm. If I could, I would. Right. That's you just know? not reality. I, it, yeah. it, it, exactly. But that's the guilt I feel even 35 years later, mm -hmm. I still feel that way. That happened, what, September 28th, 1988, and uh, we were arrested two days later. Okay. You know, and I was talking about it with friends, but we got allowed to somewhat swear, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I was fucked up over it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wasn't bragging. Right. You know, I was literally a part of me. I look back on it now going, I'm, I'm asking for you all, someone turn me the fuck in, mm. you know, right. and not knowing, I know now that's what I was feeling in the back of the head, mm -hmm. but I was trying to get it out. Like someone lead me in the right way, what to do, mm -hmm. you know, cause those two nights I didn't sleep at all, yeah. you know, and I, I was a, I was a friggin' mess, you know, and, uh, was it a relief when you got arrested? You know what? There's a saying. You know, I wasn't arrested. I was rescued, brother. Right. I mean that. Mm -hmm. You know, because I probably, if I had held that in any longer, you know, I probably would have taken my own life. You know, and that's a fact. You know, and, uh, you know, we were arrested on a Friday. I remember, you know, I was the first one arrested. You know, because I went in that day, that day I was arrested, I went to my, my aunt's house and told my aunt and my mom that I took part in this, mm. you know. My aunt said, get the fuck out of the house. My mom said, you got 24 hours till I call the cops. Unbeknownst to me, the moment I left, they were, which rightfully so, mm -hmm. you know, I mean. So you could say that now, but at the time? I didn't know that though. You didn't know, I didn't okay. know that. So I didn't know that. About I found that. out afterwards, my mom told me all about yeah, it, okay. you know, and uh, you know, and I, and, when I went to the police station, you know, I remember walking in and all of a sudden, because I got arrested in front of the high school, you know. And, uh, scene? Yeah, right at lunchtime. Right. Okay, yeah, so definitely. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm getting put into the cruiser. Well, one of their undercover LTD cars, right? Mm -hmm. Got put in there and everybody was just staring at me. But unbeknownst to me, there were already people, at, friends, girls I knew at the police station. And I remember seeing a friend. They got Josh. They got Josh. And I'm like, all of a sudden, people are coming out of the wood. I'm like, seriously? You know? And I realized because I was talking about it, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, they put the mom card on me. I was the first one arrested, you know, not knowing. I've never been, like, arrested, arrested, mm -hmm. you know, held over for 30 days. They pulled the mom card. Mom's like, tell them what happened. Mm -hmm. I ball away. A co-defendant got arrested like not too long after I did. My other co-defendant got arrested like three days later when he was up. He was up in New Hampshire. Damn. Yeah, that night, that Friday night, September 30th, I, will, I had to. They put me in Salem jail because I was so young mm -hmm. on eyeball watch with another inmate, a lifeliner watching over me. I was in a, th I was in a, I was in a, I was it's supposed to be a one man room. There's three guys in this cell with me. So sleeping on the floor. And uh, that was my whole weekend. I barely came out of the cell. You know, I wasn't really allowed to roam around anywhere, yeah. you know. And uh, and this was at the jail or you in the police station? No, it was Sal Salem, Salem Jail. So this is before Middleton then? Oh I'll yeah, Middleton, okay. yeah. It was Salem Jail and Lawrence Jail oh, back okay. then. So. Uh, Middleton didn't get built till what? 19, I mean, didn't open till like 1990. Yeah, what was place, your, so what was the rest of your experience like in Salem Jail? <sighs> we spent 14 months there, back and forth. I was there in Lawrence. Jail. Were you with your um, co-defendants yeah, at yeah, the time yeah, on the same yeah. block? No, we were on the same tier. We're on blue tier. Did that make it at least a little bit easier? It did. You guys all it being did. so young, at least being together. Yeah, it did. You think that, you know, and I've said this, I say this a lot when I, uh, I do my testimony at uh, AA meetings, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm in Tewksbury. You know, you think that would have been the wake up call to sober me up. It did the opposite. You know, wow. Whenever we can make the homebrew, make it. Now, all of a sudden, whatever pills are coming in, let me get that. Right. 
you know, and, I'll be, and it's the truth that drugs are more readily available in than they are out here. Mm. It's a fact, you know, and whatever we could get our hands on, I did. Did that end up causing any trouble? No. Uh, like with other guys doing well, time? Well, the administration, any well, whole time? They didn't really, like no, you know, no, they didn't really, no, okay. no, 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 no. I got caught up twice for two dirty urines in my bed. One in 91 for marijuana, and then in 2007 was for heroin. And this it was, was a dirty that was by the time you got upstate. So yeah, yeah. eventually what happens? You go to trial? You guys go, to, go trial. to trial. My co-defendants, Kevin went first. Um, they spent, I think, like four days on deliberation. He got a life sentence. And then John went. He got a life sentence. Mm. Do they offer you a plea deal? They did. And they wanted me to turn state's evidence. I'm not going to prison being labeled a fucking rat. Yeah. I took the stand for him and said mm-hmm. I did it all. I wasn't, that wasn't going to happen. I'm not going to, you know what yeah. I mean? That's just, especially for a natty, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it didn't help matters, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I mean, he still got a life yeah. bid, it usually but never does. I wanted to, I wanted to right a wrong yeah. in the convict right. way, you know, and uh, well, just even as a friend too, man, you try to, there's no reason for well, all of us, if one person could, you know, yeah, I could say this now, we weren't really, you know. John's my my childhood friend from elementary. And this and is all you guys. I, first I just time met. No, I locked just, up in jail, real adult jail. My my first time. Okay. You know, I get my other Cody, not John, but the other guy. He did time basically institutionalized most mm-hmm. of his life, and I barely knew him. He's not from Glossa. The solid thing to do was to take the stand and yeah. say I did it all. When my trial came, what did your lawyer? have to say about that bullshit he's like what are you doing i said i'm doing what i want to do you know you're not going to stop me were you able to um get a paid lawyer no my first lawyer was christopher skinner the second one was albert previtt my first lawyer is the one that wanted me to turn states not happening that'll that'll help you you'll get a second and i was like dude not gonna happen and so me in my irrational thinking was all right they're not gonna let this guy they're gonna keep make this guy stay my lawyer so, you know, I had one of them depressed modes, you know, and took the razor, started hacking up, mm-hmm. had to go to court for a motion, had to go in the back of the uh, judge's chambers, and I explained, I said, listen, he's wanted me to do, I don't want him as my lawyer now, and look what he's put, look what right. he's made me do, bang, new lawyer, mm-hmm. you know, and that, the new lawyer was the one like, listen, I can't stop you from doing this. I'm advising you not to take the stand. But same thing, this new lawyer, just to be clear, no way of getting a plea deal without becoming exactly. state's evidence. Exactly. I just want to emphasize 100, 100%, that. 100%. Okay. 100%. For both of them, it was 100%. That's the only way. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to look myself in the mirror knowing I just help put somebody away because a lot of people life. might have it twisted a lot of times they might see somebody with a natural life sentence or why didn't you plead out or why yeah. and this could this is one of the reasons why yeah. people may not be able to plead out yeah. is because they try to put you in these situations lose lose we won't give you a plea deal unless yeah. you cooperate yep. and for most of us it's just not an option nope. so you guys what happens from there you get you guys get the sentence i mean yeah. talk December, about just December that day 7th, man. 1989. What, what's the what's your mind what's going through your mind after that man like, i remember in the old courthouse in salem i was in the, in the back holding pen waiting for them to deliberate now mind you i already know what i'm gonna get my whole time during my trial you could blindfold me with dental floss that's how stoned i was mm-hmm. you know i just whatever i'm numb it is it is what it is i know it's coming but they spent three hours and something a couple minutes on my deliberation but the whole time my mm. stomach was in cramps mm-hmm. i'm literally i'm not balling my eyes up but i'm curled up in the fetal position where's your what's your confidence level at as far oh, as oh, i was already guilty. i already had no I'm, okay. i know it's coming mm-hmm. you know it was the the domino effect those two already got their life sentences mm-hmm. i know what's coming for a split second while they're deliberate, I said, who knows? They might come back with a second. That was really foolish thinking. You so know you weren't I even mean? thinking about a not just, guilty. You exactly. Just, maybe yeah. they, I could get a second. Yeah. Yeah. Just for a second. And for there the people no that way. don't know, what's the difference between if you would have got found guilty with a second degree? Um, you'd be eligible for parole after 15 years. Yeah. So I would have been eligible for parole. If they gave me a second, I would have been eligible for parole in 2003. Mm-hmm. And uh, They come back and it's... It's a, it's natural life. I, I bawled. Did you have family in the courtroom at that time? No. 
No. No. My did mom, they turn your, their back on you because of your the seriousness of your charge? My cousin did. My aunt at the time. We weren't talking at that time. Okay. You know, my mom was a trooper. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have any contact with my grandparents because I only know my mother's side of the family. So, no, I haven't had any contact with my cousin since I've been in. Okay. Um, my aunt and I have built a relationship since after a few years mm -hmm. after I was in. Okay. You know, I don't think she'll ever really forgive me for it. Mm -hmm. But we've moved past it. Yeah. It's like we it's something that we don't talk about because she gets too upset about mm -hmm. talking about it. So out of respect for her, I don't bring it up. Yeah. You know, um and my mom, my mom was there for the first twenty one years of this bid. That did you see her in the courtroom? She wasn't my family or, when I was sentenced, yeah. None of my family okay. members were in the courtroom. Okay, you. My mom was already my mom already flew back down to Florida and she would have been the only one there okay. anyways. So so you must have felt very alone back in the I always in the felt court, alone. Man. You know, I had I have one dear friend that's been there since day one. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. sitting right over there. She wasn't allowed in the courtrooms. So what do they do? They throw you on the bus? Well, we went back to Salem Jail, wait for the paddy wagon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember sitting in the holding pen downstairs in Salem Jail. And guys are sitting. I'm just sitting there rocking, smoking like a champ. Smoking cigarettes, and I remember a guy said, "Hey, someone said you just got a life bid." And I'm like, "Yeah." He says, "Oh, don't worry. About it. After the first five years, it'll everything will be all right." And I'm like, mm. "All right, I don't know. How to, I think he was right. just trying to make light. Right. You know, they see a young kid yeah, getting yeah. sentenced. You know, and uh, in your head, you must have been like, "Yeah, easy for you to say." Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, I was like, "Really? I don't need to hear this shit from you, bro." Yeah. What the fuck? Right. You know, and uh, yeah, we drove. Uh, I didn't go to. I didn't. Concord was classification then. Okay. But I didn't go to Concord. I went right to Walpole. Yeah. So, you know, pulled up, went through the, went through the main trap, handcuffed and shackled. You know, still wearing my court clothes. Were you the only one to go to Walpole? That yeah. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, else? Okay. everyone else was going. Uh, there was a couple. There was just a couple guys that got sentenced mm -hmm. that were in the uh, the old school paddy wagon where. You had the wooden seats, wooden benches on the side of the mm. van, and then the grate with another separation yeah. for if the women were in there. Yeah. I remember walking into the, because once you get past the, the, the first trap, second trap opens, and it's connected, obviously, to the wall. It's dead man's land. Mm -hmm. And then you get brought over. You walk over to booking. And I remember walking through dead man's and going towards it, and it was like, I want to say it was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. You could feel the hatred resonating off of them walls. Wow. Man. And you could cut the tension, even then while you're outside, mm -hmm. the tension with a knife. That's how, it's a hard word to describe, yeah. you know, and it's just. Overwhelming? It was overwhelming. And I was like, all right, um, all right, this is where I'm going to be for a while. Were your co-defendants up there waiting for you? One was. Ke okay. Kevin was there. John was there. So is that your first, like, where's Kevin when you get well, up there? Well, I the couldn't. First? They wouldn't. When I got when I got, when I I got got booked, they kept me in uh, the, the HSU ward. Because of your age? Because of my age and because of my history mm -hmm. of, you know, suicide attempts. Mm -hmm. They kept me in there for a little while, but, you know. Kevin sent me a little ditty bag, you know, Walkman smokes. Yeah. How'd that um, feel when you got that? At least it was some good. Sort of... It was good, but there was, you know, not from him, but from the person that brought the, you know, the guy was able to get it to me. Mm -hmm. Said here, you know, and it was a couple of bags of dope mm. and a shiv, you know, and I was like, I look back on it now, I. I should have just I, I, one. I never once had to use. A weapon while I was in. Okay. I've gotten into f scraps, mm -hmm. but I never had to use a weapon. Um, but snorted those bags real quick, mm. you know, just to to numb myself. Absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, I always got told, you know, you have your seat in the chow hall. Don't let no one punk you off for mm. it. You know, and we had our own North Shore table. It was like a Lynn Beverly gloss in North Shore. Right. You know, and uh. I remember meeting Kevin after a week. You know, I got taken out of HSU and brought into the a, uh, OU block. 
you know, I'm on the flats. I remember walking, no cleaning supplies. I walk into this room and it's just, it, it was, I mean, it was disgusting. Yeah. You know, it kind of get to clean the supply. Everybody else, other, other guys that, mm -hmm. that I guess I was in Salem jail with were there. Josh, here's this, here's that. Don't worry about it. You know, Kevin sends his best. You'll see each other soon. And, uh, yeah, hearing guys scream, not screaming, but, you know, you can hear the noise in the block, you yeah. know. You don't have nothing in the room. I felt literally alone. Did it make you think about how dangerous a place it was when you get the thing slid to you? Like, this is something that I'm going to have to, you said you never had to use it, but it's something where it's like, man, rather caught with it than without it. Yeah, you know? which yeah. I have. Which it, I have. And you got caught by the administration? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, not concealing it good enough, obviously. <laughs> wow. So, you know? I mean, I'm sure you must have heard stories about Walpole at that time. They're coming fresh off of the riots in the 70s and yeah, all that. Yeah, you heard so, about it. You heard about it. Like, But when you get there, is it? It was surreal. You know, there's there's a certain code. You know, you know, you don't you don't look in someone's room. Mm. You sell when you walk by. You know, and on the max end, there's 45 cells, you know. 1 through 15, 16 through 30, 31 through 45. Mm -hmm. You remember what number you got to go to, you know, so you're mm -hmm. not looking in cells. Seriously segregated. I can't, you know, you got your, you got your white tables, you got your Puerto Ricans, you got your yeah. Dominicans, you got your black shit. That's just how yeah, it was. You yeah. had your gangster table. Mm -hmm. You couldn't intermingle, you know. Man, a brother of friends, I can't go sit at the table. You know what it's I mean? It's not like that. Yeah. Okay. Does it ever sink in the magnitude of like your sentence or is it just like you're kind of entrenched in this wall pool thing and you don't really have time to think about it until maybe nighttime when you ever the click of that door closed at night it mm. kicks in because yeah. you're alone now and you're in a safe spot where you know what that door is not going to open let the tears flow right and or if you need to you know, scream into the fucking pillow because you're, mm -hmm. you're angry, you know, and... I mean, what kind of, what other things going through your mind? Do you, can you hear people sharpening knives? Is you it... would hear, you know, you would hear it in the, you would hear it like, you know, if you're waiting, like, in line, because they only had three showers, and that's where you would do your shopping. Okay. You know what I mean? Because the water running, mm -hmm. you know, only one person mm -hmm. in the shower at a time, if you're hanging on the rail and wait. I got next for the shower from coming from the gym or something, right? You could hear the scraping. I had to do the scraping yeah. to Alan again, you know? He did it when the shower was running, mm -hmm. so the screw can't hear you. You know, the CO can't hear it, you know? And uh, well, you could, you've you heard it a few it times. Yeah. It's, you know... I mean, I'm sure eventually you get used to it, but at Yeah, but first, you can see kind of permanent like... grooves yeah. in the shower floors. You know, there's like, they've probably been there forever. We used to have a regular, like a desk. The middle drawer of the desk you could take out, it's like that thin. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's a pain in the ass to get out. And then you got to cut it down. And all you're doing is taking razors and snipping little grooves in it to be your yeah. hacksaw, dude. Oh, it was a pain in the ass. I mean, it sounds like a time-consuming um, process. Yeah, and you sometimes, got all night. You sometimes, got, yeah. sometimes the CEOs never made rounds at night. It's 11 to 7. These guys want, don't want to make a round. Yeah, you they're know? not there to save you for sure. No, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Absolutely so not. So how long is it before when you get there till you kind of see some serious stuff pop off? Uh, the first time I was in the chow hall, the chow hall set up where, you know, both sides at this time, Walpole was mm -hmm. open. You get the max in, the minimum in, guys going in. You walk in, you go through the line, get your food. There's like a railing part where the, where, where the line is where they're serving you, mm -hmm. you know, like a, like a little barrier. I saw a kid, it was two black kids, this kid literally hopped over the railing. No word of a lie, that this thing looked like a sword, looked like a bayonet. And he just started, he just started going to town. I look up for a second and I was like, oh shit, Kevin said, just go back eating. Mm -hmm. And then that was my numbness to it afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, if it doesn't pertain to me and the people that I'm dealing with, the blinders are on, dude. Yeah. The blinders are on. Yeah, because you don't want to make a big... It's not like, you know... You're not going to... County, everyone's going to maybe hop up and everyone's watching. Like, you're not supposed to draw any attention no, to No, you let that. them like do what they do. No gawking. No yeah, gawking, gawk, you okay. know? And 
Yeah, that was my very, that was in December of 89. So what are the, some of the other, like, do's and don'ts that they, because it's different when you go from county to somewhere like Walpole. What are mm -hmm. some of the do's or don'ts? You don't let no one take your seat in the chow hall. You know, you don't take a short, you know, you take a short and then guess what? You're fresh meat. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be looked upon as prey, you know. Um, you can't, no, don't let anybody disrespect you. you. Don't go and talk to the CO by yourself. If That's you need to go one, get yeah. somebody, you need somebody with you. Yep. Never look into somebody's room. Never ask a guy what he's doing time for. It's so micro, like it's so, you know what I mean? It's so, in, to look back on it, it's like insanity. Right. You know what I mean? And, you know, you, you stick with your own, mm -hmm. all right? Um, the three things they used to say, don't gamble, don't get involved in the drugs, and don't mess with the homos, mm -hmm. you know, yep. that was, and the homosexuals, excuse yep. me, you know, that, those were three rules you don't do, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely mess with the drugs, and I, and I wasn't a gambler, but I, uh, I was the runner for the book, so, okay. and back then, the cigarettes was currency. Cigarettes so, yeah. before the stamps. Yeah, the cigarettes. before the stamps. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Was that guy right when he told you about the first five years? No, I think the first 12 years was pretty bad because mm. I always, I look back on, I wanted to be accepted and I don't know why, but then I look back on, I'm like, well, you're doing a life bit. You know, if someone said, Josh, I really, well, listen, we got to go take care of something. All right. Mm. I'll either be the lookout or I'm the one going into the room to fight the kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And not having all those friends in my life, I wanted to be accepted. Right. And this is my life. 94, I I tried to do, you know, they said I used to get high, but I tried to do, you know, my own transaction so I can have mass quantities of my own mm -hmm. dope. And that backfired on me. Someone tried to take advantage. So I had to go and grab the person. I didn't grab the middleman because mm -hmm. it wasn't the middleman. It was the main guy. So I had to go and fight him in the jail hall. Mm -hmm. A month later, we both come come out of the hall and I had to fight him again because wow. you didn't pay up like you were supposed to. Right. You know, it's 500 bucks. It's 500 bucks. That's yeah. a lot of money. In, in, in oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, he eventually paid up and it went to someone else anyways. Mm -hmm. But as long as he didn't have the money anymore, I was good. Within a few more months after that, I... Uh, I was in Bristol 4, April 3rd. Um, I remember I was a runner in the unit. They got like four or five runners in the unit. And back right then, it's phases. We were in fa phase two, phase phase one, phase two, and phase three. It was the whole place was like, the whole prison got se segregated. And uh, actually, this is 95, excuse me. I was upstairs. The third tier was out. 15 guys were out with the runners. So about... 18, 19 guys out, and uh, I'm upstairs on the third day. I lived on the flat, so I'm talking to somebody. I look down, and they're stomping a mud hole on the CO. Wow. Like, brutal. You know, this, this CO was uh, just six months six months into it. Was, now, it was, was this um, white guys, black guys, it was, it guys? Was, it, was Spani it was Spanish and black, because I, I look back, and I'm noticing that none of the white guys came out for their wreck that was on that third tier. So they, they kind of already like might someone have known. already yeah. knew, but no one gave me the heads up, right? Because mm -hmm. I would have just stayed in the spot and just watched TV. The moment, I mean, he had they took the, the the emergency alarm from him and literally just they came close to killing this guy. So he was able to get dragged out of the unit and they're telling everybody lock in, lock in. Like the dumbass that I am. Instead of just zipping down, I took my sweet time going to my room. By the time I got down, they locked the door on me. So now eight of the guys that were involved with this were locked out with me, another white guy, and another guy who had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. There's 11 of us out, and we had to stay out. Mm -hmm. they, I looked up, and I asked, I, you can open it? And the CEO in the gallery gave me the finger, said, see you later, you're on your own. So it's either fight or flight. I had to grab sheets out of, the, out of my, because the bars are right there, my cell's right there, grab the sheets tie up around the neck, make sure, you know, the, the other areas are, mm -hmm. waited a while till they came in and uh, they shot us with the, uh, the canister uh, concussion ones. Mm -hmm. One didn't explode. I gunned it. I, exp I basically tear gassed all administration at wow. the, like an idiot. And when they came in, 
you know, I'm holding a shower rod. Did you purposely hot. like throw it that way or were you just trying no, to get I away just from threw you? It. Like, I just threw it, not wanna... knowing, you know, and unfortunately it did erupt and I basically tear gassed another unit across the way by oh, accident. Geez. Oops. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that till later. Yeah, I went to SEG yeah. afterwards because it was a sold on staff. When they came in, they came in with the dogs, they came in with the tag team. Mm. I remember throwing one punch at the helmet and then I just got cracked and then supermaned. You know, handcuffed and shackled and supermaned all the way down the hallway, meeting by the mm. door, by the door, you know, because they're pissed. One yeah. of their oh, own yeah. just take, almost died, you know. Yeah, and they don't take too kindly to that. No, and it, you know, I uh, sat in nine block for a while for that. Do they try to charge you criminally with any of that? No, no I did problem. get, uh, I got DDU time. DDU they gave me time. two and a half years. And that was the first time that eight, eight of them, eight guys, got 10 year sentences in DDO. You know? And I know a couple now that are doing great in their lives because you know, they changed their lives too. While I was in DDU, I was able to have a friend send me drugs through mail. Mm. So I was able to numb myself even more because it, was, it, 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 wasn't, a, it wasn't a habit of just doing heroin. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've never put a needle in my arm. I snorted it, I just didn't want I didn't. I wanted to numb myself from where I was at. So I hated myself, what Bobby. I yeah. hated myself for the guilt of taking someone's life. Mm -hmm. You know, I literally had no self worth. You know, no direction. I'm not Mr. Joe Convict. You know, I survived. Yeah. You know, I call it resilience. To be honest yeah. with you, you know, and you know, like I said, fight or flight. You got to do what you got to do. Exactly. Play, play by their rules and their, yeah. You know, you know, and I. I you know, I've met some real good guys since I've been in. When I got out of DDU, I did three years DDU. I wasn't even out of DDU 17 days, and they were already jamming me up. Someone sent me something through the mail. I had no idea it was coming. From the street? Yeah, someone sent me. Yeah, I'm not, One thing I never did, I'm, I'm, I don't like being hyper. Someone sent me cocaine through oh, the okay. mail. Someone tried to use me as a, I think, a gay... Uh, Almost like a pawn? Yes, or, yeah. a patsy. Mm. You know, and I was selling. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like that? I still don't know to this day who did it. Did you I feel was, disrespected though? I did. I'm mm. like, you know, and I had good friends I talked to about it. You know, one you just had on there not too long ago, mm -hmm. and he, you know, we talked about. It. I was like, what the? He said, Josh. I said, I, I said. He said, I don't know. I said, I know you don't know, but what the, dude? Seriously, I'm waiting, going back to DDU again. They gave me a six month three month concurrent. So I had to go three months without a ticket, you know, and I had a good friend speak to somebody and say, listen, just let him write out the three months in here. So to be clear too, it's not real. It wasn't really somebody Someone from was the street. It was somebody in there in sending there, word to the Because it was a letter. Kinda, it was a yeah. letter written to me. We miss you. How are you? The dog misses you. And I'm like, I, I went, because mm. they, they're showing it to me and, you know, they brought me to the So I was like, you know that I said I have no idea. So no one ever comes to you like, hey, be on the lookout, something's coming for you. In no, the day. no, absolutely not. No, no they they figured all right, I'm so gonna get it they in. Just call you one day and yeah, you go to the we hole. We come in from the yard, and we're we're actually out there playing football. We come in from the yard, and all of a sudden, some uh, sergeant calls me over. He says, "Halbert, you're traveling." And I was like, "What? Yeah, come on." Mm. I go on to through the through the visiting room and. They cuff me up, bring me the yips, and show me this. He's like, who's... I said, dude, I have no idea. Right. You know? I said, do I look like I want... Because I came out of DDU weighing 142 pounds. Well, I so went in there almost weighing... I went almost 200. Now, why is that? Is it just they don't I feed think, you? You're not allowed I, well, to get canteen? No, they, no, not allowed to get canteen at all. Okay. Not Back then, nothing. You're wearing bobos. You're not getting... You're not getting Game Boys. You're not TV. getting... Your t you get a black and white that they gave you. And a stupid little little GE radio Walkman, mm -hmm. and uh, but you couldn't get canteen at all. You're gonna buy stamps. That's it. You ever go to bed hungry in there? Oh, all the time. But I think I, you know, in my mind, I was like, I started giving food away that, I, that you know, slide it down the line to somebody because mm -hmm. I thought they were poisoning that. Wow. Everybody seems to say that when they've been to DDU, man. They don't can't you can't. How, yeah. So how's that feel? Like you can't even trust the food. You need food yeah. to survive, man. It must be a real yeah mind game kind it of was, thing going it on. It was, it was, and I, you know, I remember waking up one day and I took a nap. I was taking a nap and it just something like snapped in my head. Like they're fucking with me. 
I look think back on paranoia. It now. Or yeah, did, well, because it was seg time. You're in right. sensory deprivation, and I've already did, you know, from 95 to almost 2000. It's almost five years but, straight of seg. So you weren't in there wiling out, like, no, banging on the no, door, giving them no, reason. You just no, think never, in your head all of a sudden never. it just came out of nowhere. They're messing with yeah. my food. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. It's just, you know, I don't know if, you know, that's the psychological warfare of putting you in the hole. Mm-hmm. You know, I, uh, yeah. You ever, was, you ever hear, like, people breaking down in there, screaming for the CEO? Screaming. Or attempted uh, people trying to, you know, take their own life or anything like that? In DDU, I don't remember anybody when I was in there that took their own life. Okay. They try to. And a lot of times, too, those attempts are um, cries for help, too. They're not exactly. Really when I was waiting trial, bo- when I was people waiting, just bored. <laughs> yeah, when I was waiting trial, it was a cry for help. Right. You know, I got the scars to show it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I, you know, and then I would say things to friends over the phone and would talk and, yeah. you know, I'd get myself, you know, all right, Mr. Albert, can we see you for a minute? Mm-hmm. What are you saying over the phone? So they're listening you know. to the phone calls. Well, too. no, no, no. I had a friend call up oh, okay, saying they okay. were concerned about Got me. Got you. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that. I yeah, said, you absolutely. know, it sounded serious coming out of my mouth, but it was more of me wanting venting and a cry for help, yeah. too. You know? And so what do they hit you with? For Do they give you more DDU time for this? They. What? Are they trying to charge you with introducing something? To well, the... I got I got charged already when I was, like I said, when I was in DDU, we got, I got caught with it. Okay. And I got an extra six months. Damn. And uh, then they, tr- they just gave me, D- they tried to give me DDU time. It was no going to court mm-hmm. or anything like that. So, yeah. Okay. And yeah. then what are they, how long are you in there this time? Well, I didn't go to, D- they waited, they had me in the hole and they gave me, they said a six month sentence, mm-hmm. three months, um, Concur- concurrent basically you go three months without a ticket before the three months is up if you get a ticket within those three months you're going to ddu for six months oh, no. so i kept my nose clean while i was still in the hole waiting to go to ddu gotcha. so and then you get back out yeah i got back out and you know i got moved to a certain uh another block and you know after a little while i got my ged in 2000 Okay. It was How, a, I was almost I was almost 29 years old. It felt great. It was, it was a sense of accomplishment. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, wow, I really did this on my own. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, it's a confidence boost. Even it just is setting any little goal and accomplishing it because yeah. then it's like, okay, what's next? Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And now at this time, I've spent almost 11 years in this place. So. Within those 11 years, what's going on? Any appeals process? I got that. I, I appealed it in 91 mm. and got denied and just said, all right, I'm done. That was one appeal? One appeal. One and appeal. Just, okay. I said, see you later. You know, I mean, I used my trial lawyer as my appeal lawyer, which was probably the dumbest thing you can do because mm-hmm. he's not going to. He's not going to put himself out there. And they have lo- they have lawyers, too, that specialize, I think. Yeah, I didn't know that then. And, uh so you get the GD, and now yeah. is your mindset starting to change you know, a little it, bit? A little bit, a little bit. You know, I got into a, a actually, I get the GD about like a month later, I get into a fight with somebody. Yeah. It's a and, fine line to walk because you can yeah. want to do the right thing in there. Yeah. But like you said, I can't take this short. I yep. can't do this. Exactly. It has a snow. It's, a, it's yep. a fine line to tip to, especially doing so much time. Yep. You might be able to get away with it a couple years. You know, I slid through my state time three years, pretty easy. You know what yeah. I mean? It was. But that's different. That's a short time. But it's still just it's still so, time, though, bro. It, it, it is. Time. It is. It is. So, but your mindset's starting to change. Yeah. You're getting a fight now. I get into I'm, a fight. What's and the I'm fight on the over? It's just well, it was over. It was usually over something stupid. stupid yeah, you know, okay. oh, oh, what? You know, guy. Oh, this dude's a rat. What? All right. Yeah. See you later. Just stupid. Yeah. yeah. Frivolous prison politic mm-hmm. bullshit. But stuff know? that you can't. You know, it's it's our life. It's yeah. our life. I, it's all you I have. look back on it now, going, wow, it's insane. It really you is. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, I I understand it, yes. but it's still you know, insanity. <laughs> exact. <Yeah. laughs> so I'm on the phone. I broke my hand in the fight. So I'm I'm I got sent to another unit, and I called my mom, and you know my mom hit me with some reality, and she says, "Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired?" Mm-hmm. And it didn't really dawn on me until then. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is close towards the end of 2000. There's a case manager that works there. She used to be a CO. She worked. She 
got into unit team and I said, are we ever going to get a class board? She says, you give me six months, six months without a D report, Josh, and I'll get you out of here. So that was the incentive. So were you seeing classification every year? Yeah. How's well, that work? It was, it was once a year you saw them. Yeah, okay. Once a year. And my year was coming up in six months. Mm-hmm. And it was, a, you know, obviously getting the GED was an accomplishment. Yeah. But going the first time ever, six months without a D report. Any other programs you were able to get into? Do they do, they do AA or anything like that at that point? No. no. Lifers Just are on low. Lifers, excuse me. Yeah. Lifers are low man on the totem pole. Yeah. You're not getting into any programs. You're the last resort, mm-hmm. you know, and especially in Walpole at that time because it was so, it was basically locked down. Yeah. You couldn't, they weren't, there weren't AA meetings, you know. You had school, GED, but you did it over the TV. You had to do, oh, they really? send you the paperwork, mm-hmm. you fill out it and send it so in. So you weren't going to a classroom with no, other students? No, the classroom was a teacher. Like-minded, you know, because nope. at least when you have that, you have, okay, we're all in school. And Some they, of us might be here for the good time, yep. but while we're here, we're like-minded. We're trying to accomplish the same thing. You didn't even have that. We did in the beginning until they started to lock the place down. Okay. In 1990, I tried to go for the GED. And when you say miserably. lock the place down, you're talking there was about a, it there goes was from a, like when you first get there being open, open completely. Open. And, and it's like everyone goes to the yard together. Everyone went to the yard, the gym, okay. chow hall, library. The and then whole when they locked it open. down, what was the difference? It was segregated. This like, unit comes out. Yeah, this, this unit this unit's not allowed to go to the chow hall at all. This mm. these four blocks, because there's in Walpole, there's there's in the max end, there's eight blocks. Mm-hmm. 45 cells in each one. One side with the four blocks was like phase three, where you get fed in. Phase two, the other four blocks get to go to the chow hall on their own. And then you had the three minimum blocks down the minimum end, which is 72 72 cells in each unit. Well, those guys were the ones working in the plate shop, Mm. the sewing shop, right? The kitchen, and they were out all the time okay you know they got to go to the so it's hall. because you were on the max end is that yeah. why you had to do the thing kind of through yeah. the tv yeah, yeah. Well, you still yeah. got it so yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely i'm proud of that you yeah know? you and, should be yeah and then you see this uh, woman from classification she yeah. tells you give me six months take it free yeah and, and she's then, known me since i started the bid mm-hmm. you know and she saw the she even said to me one time she said you know i know there's goodness in you stopped acting like a fool yeah. Oh, man. I feel like a lot of people in those places, it's uh, people, there's good and bad. You know? 100%. There, there may be a few small minority of people who just, that's evil yeah. people. They're just terrible just people. Yeah, exactly. But for the most part, man, it's just people that made poor judgment. I'm not going to say mistakes, but poor judgment, yeah. I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's really what it is. And people are doing their time there. Yep. You get class to a medium from there? Yeah, in 2001. You stayed out of trouble? Yeah, 2001, I went to um, Oak Colony, mm-hmm. which... It's, it wasn't. It's like a mental health place now, but it was just. A, it was a. Mm-hmm. It was a level five yeah. slash four within a couple of days while I was there. I saw a friend of mine. And he said, "Nah, guy, I think he passed away." Tommy Hurley. He says, "Josh, you know, why don't you come to church?" I was like, "All right, all right, I'll go." I mean, I've never walked into a church since I've been at. Now, is this something that like some people might go to church because otherwise you're locked in the cell? It no, no, the, no. This is during a, wreck. This is during rec. Sunday morning, you know, you could have gone outside or, you know, Plenty gone other to the gym. To be, 100%. But you chose to go to church Absolutely. that Sunday. Do you know I'm why? Looking like at the that well, because why you Tommy, Tommy was a boy. friend of mine, gotcha. and I don't want to be disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Third, I think a part of me wanted something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just I needed something in my life, and it was a, it was a, it was a Catholic mass. I enjoyed the structure of it. Because I'm already surrounded by structure. Right. So, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to Mass before, but yeah. it's structured, man. You do this, you do that, mm-hmm. you get the communion. And because I wasn't baptized, I couldn't get the communion, okay. which is all good. Yep. You know, I'll respect that. Sure. And uh, there were other guys that were in church that I saw, and I, I saw life is absolute guys who are never walking out the door mm-hmm. free. Mentally. Yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. absolutely free in doing programs, you know, and 
Bobby, I wanted that. Mm -hmm. some, something in imagine. me. Yeah. You know, I mean, I haven't, I hadn't used since 2000 at that time. Was and that a, a, um, a clear choice or is it just like, eh, that was things a, didn't line up? Like, no, it was I a, didn't have the opportunity. No, I had the, the opportunities. Okay. I just had a clear choice. Nice. You know, right after that fight I had, you know, my mom said, are oh, you sick and tired, sick and tired, being sick and tired. I made a conscious effort. I didn't go to AA. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any of that. I just, I just stopped. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wasn't going through the withdrawals because I wasn't doing heroin every single day. Right. Right. If it was around and readily available, okay. you know, and, you know, taking at this time, you, taking someone's meds, making the home brew, it wasn't, I numbed myself. How did you afford Well, when you were doing God, it? Like God said, rest her soul. My mom helped me out immensely. Mm. Every month, the money order that yeah. I could survive on. Mm hmm you know, and that a lot of it. You ever feel gu guilty about spending that money? I that look back you, on it, yeah. But at the moment, no. No, mm. no, not at all. It was about me. Yeah. You know, I know for the longest it was always about me. Like you me. said, survival in there too, man. Yeah. Or Brazil, you know, it's like you're not in here. You don't know what it's like. So, yep. Absolutely. So church, you, you kind of took right to it though, huh? 100%. I started going and I started having a council with, there was a fa Father George Zoll that was there. Mm. That was the, he was the, uh, the prison uh, ministry, uh, the priest for the Catholic Church, counseling, going through lessons to, to get first confirmation, baptism, and communion. Mm -hmm. oh, and I started focusing in on, like I said, low man on the totem pole as life is. Mm -hmm. I walked in, I remember it was a health awareness class, and this is like 2003, 2004. But I signed up for it, didn't get in it. But when they were doing class for movement, Mm -hmm. I saw the door open and it was supposed to be a bunch of guys. It was only a few. I just dipped right in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the moment the door closes, I'm in there for an hour. You right. can't do nothing. Right. I had to force myself into a program. <laughs> wow. And she signed me in and I was good. And then the next week around, you were able to get in? Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You had to do that. I had to, you know, closed mouth, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't get fed. Rushing in there. You yeah. know, and... That accomplishment of doing that, I started doing Toastmasters and mm. speaking without fear, you know, getting involved. At that time, I wasn't involved in Project Youth yet. I tried, mm -hmm. but they already had their set guys that were oh, in okay, it, yep. you know. And, uh, you know, I got in 2002 that first confirmation. It felt great. Yeah. You know, and. They say born again. 100%. 100%. You, you know, I won't, you know, I have a strong faith, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to say, Bobby, you know, Jesus loves you, right. man. You yeah, know yeah, what? Yeah. I won't do that to somebody, yeah. you know. I have, you know, you know, if anybody else wants to talk about that, all the power, all right, mm -hmm. we're up for it, Absolutely. you know. But, you know, I led by example, and I'm not much of a, like right now, you make it comfortable, I can talk. Right, right? yeah, yeah. But I'm not that. one to, you know, I don't like doing this, hey, hey, hey. You, mm -hmm. know, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, uh you know, I was, at, I was at Oak Colony for four years, and I built, I built some real good friendships with guys there. You know, guys mm -hmm. that, you know, the unfortunate part is, you know, a few of them are out, and, you know, they're, late, they're second degree is, and we can't bond while we're out here. Portal yeah, situation. Yeah, exactly, and yep. I think it's, I wish it would change, mm -hmm. because who's going to know better, you know, if I'm going through something, than someone that's been through it himself yeah you know and not only that they're doing all positive things yeah it, that, the recidivist that rate for lifers sense. to get returned back is, is low. very low yeah extremely low and uh you know i spent four years at old colony built some real strong friendships mm -hmm. and my faith in god at this time i got almost five five and a half years sober mm -hmm. and uh i got moved to norfolk they had to they, they had to move me to a lower security. You know, I just left I basically been in a single cell for the last fifteen years, mm -hmm. basically, to a fifty two man dorm, which was insane. That's a big difference. Huge difference. Huge fit huge Did difference. Did you like the dorms? I don't Absolutely really like dorms. not. Yeah, some people what? like the freedom of it. Listen, I don't like I got a guy sleeping on this side, this side, <laughs> one above me. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. it just didn't work out. Yeah. You know, I spent two years there. I got involved right with the church. I started, I, I, I signed up for it. They started BU in 2007. Mm. I tried and 
they wanted an essay. My spelling is atrocious. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm all set. You know, and uh, a buddy of mine, you know, my, my bunkie used to go out every day from like three to five. Uh, and uh, me, I'd kick back in the cell and at the time watching GH, you know. <laughs> General Hospital. Absolutely. Corinthal, Come, yeah, on oh Come on <laughs> now. Come on now. And a buddy of mine come in the room in the cell and says, uh, hey, Josh, can I get high in here? Because his cell, he was sleeping. I said, yeah, go ahead. And at the moment... Was he, that not a problem, the decision for you? For to let him, to, to yeah. let him do that? Yeah. Uh, no, because in, your, it's, in, head, in my head, wanna... it's, you know, what am I going to do? He's, he's a kid I know. Right. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to say F you. Right. Okay. I, I should have because the the last, the, the second part of that question was, Josh, you want to, mm. he didn't even finish the sentence, Bobby. Mm. I jumped out of the bunk and snorted a line of dope. Mm. And I was, I look back on it going, you, you friggin' idiot, what mm -hmm. are you doing? You know, and started flushing after our, the very next day, flushing down with the water. Didn't help. Got caught for a dirty urine. So and what are they doing? Are they randomly urinating people, or, well, or is kid, it visible? Well, this kid, visibly this kid, like high this kid, this kid was already that night on 100 milligrams of morphine. Now he's snorting the dope. So he's just a walking, yeah, you know, Anyone a zombie. He's a zombie. What's going you on? You know, yeah. and I, I didn't realize it, but that night he got pinched going out for meds. By the yips, they hit him for a urine because mm -hmm. he was stumbling all over the place. And because guilt by association, mm -hmm. a couple of days later, they come stormtrooping into my room. Oh, you got to go down to OIC building. Let's get a urine. Mm -hmm. You know. And Did the flushing like work? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know. And there, they, they, you know, I went in the, the 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 dry tank, and the sergeant that moved me over to this unit, he's like. Well, what do you think the results are going to be? I said, your guess is as good as mine, man, right? <laughs> you know, it is what it is, you mm -hmm. know, and they're trying to question me. They want to know where, where it came from. from I was like, listen, man, someone must have spiked my coffee, you know? And they're mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're not getting no answers out of it. Get yeah. them to the IB, put them yeah, in the yeah. hole. <laughs> and uh, to this day, you know, I, you know, for two years, I didn't admit it to a good friend of mine. Mm. And I should have, mm -hmm. you know, because... That person's always been honest with me. I felt bad that I kept that to myself, you know, ashamed. Because mm -hmm. it was the first, that was the first time, my first lapse and my only lapse. Okay. You know, it's been seven, almost 17 years now. Well, it could have, could have went worse. It could have snowballed. So could have, oh, you know. 100% could have, you know. I spent four months in the hole. There was a, it's funny, a director of treatment there who used to be my counselor at Walpole was trying her hardest to keep me to stay. Mm -hmm. At Norfolk, yeah, and they wanted yeah. to send you back up to. I got, the, I got sent. No, I got sent to the Max. Shirley Max. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got sent to the Max, and uh, it's a little, was, di little different than Walpole. A little, a little bit more, obviously more secure. Did the buildings much? Yeah, different. it's a newer building. Yeah, right? yeah, and um, it was the first time you know I got sent to OU, and it was the first time I got to see my co-defendant John. I haven't After seen him. So I haven't well. seen him since '89. Yeah, he right. Because you saw Kevin and Walt. We were me and Kevin you... were together most of our okay, bed. Okay, but John was not. John, okay. I haven't seen him in almost what was it, eighteen years at this time. Okay. So, you know, brought me a little ditty back because I'm in OU. You know, we hugged. How are ya? Good to see you, buddy. You know, and you know, I got immediately put into uh, the kitchen block. Did you notice anything different about him since the well, last time you I seen mean, him? We're both bald. We're both <laughs> old. We're both out of shape. Mm -hmm. um, that was all the difference. Last time I saw him, he had a full head of hair. So did I. So, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, so you say you were out of shape too? Was it? Well, not was out exercise of shape. and nothing well, you really got big well, into, or just it, off no, and on? No, it was. It was. It, I'm not saying out of shape. Out okay. of shape, right? I've been in good shapes while I was in. I just did, compared. I did the jogging. Mm -hmm. I did the pull-ups. You know, I did. Wasn't a big guy in the weight room. I mm -hmm. was more calisthenics yeah. throughout my entire bed. You yeah. know, go out, play handball. Go out and. Try to play basketball as best as I could, mm -hmm. right? That really didn't work so out So you too get well. up to the max. How many years before you start to hear maybe whispers of a law changing and a possibility of getting out? At this out? time, I ha um, there really it really wasn't in, this is 2007, yet, so, so it wasn't really. So at this point, you're still in your head. Yeah, you're I'm not dying. going anywhere. You know, I had, I had two good friends, well, an ex-girl who passed away and, you know, another good friend who, 
Mm -hmm. you know, trying to be Nancy Drew, right? <laughs> trying to work on, you know, getting working on my case, okay. you know, and you know, to to no avail, okay. you know, and uh, not by their fault. Right. It just it just didn't work out. I mean, it must have felt good having somebody that cared at least. Or that woman over there has been there since day one. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what it's about. That's exactly exactly. I'm blessed to have her. So how was your time in the max? How long did you stay I there stayed, for? I stayed there six months. Six months? Six months. I was in the kitchen the whole time. So what, you saw class board and then? Yeah. I went to, I started going to church mm -hmm. immediately, immediately and got to run into some some good friends there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Billy Benowski, who mm -hmm. was a real good friend of mine. It was, it was, it was, it was all positive. Started just, I literally... Hit the ground running when I got there. Started working every chance I got to go to church. Sundays was my day off mm -hmm. from from work. So that's that, there you go. There's mass mm -hmm. and football, mm -hmm. two favorite religions. There you, go. you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. And uh, it, what's crazy, and I I, I had a because uh, I was on the month I was on the uh, monthly hit for urines. Now once you get a dirty urine, you gotta mm -hmm. pay 144 bucks yeah. for it. You know, and I would get hit, and then I remember one guy came to my door who worked in the kitchen block. You know, my our side, I lock in early because I got to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and go to work. Yeah. And I uh, knocked on the door, and it's like nine o'clock at night. I said, "What's up?" Oh, Josh, I got this good stuff. I, yeah, I'm all set. Mm. Now, mind you, I just got hit for my urine the day before. I know if I wanted to, I'm not going to get hit for another month. Mm. Around 11 o'clock, the door opens. Ah, oh, you got to give a urine. Mm. I felt like not for nothing. I thought, wow, it's either God testing me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or God testing me. Something, you know, the devil's test, something's going on, you right. know? And I was like, all right. A week later, someone asked me. Oh, you want to? No, I'm good. And these are. And I still. Is this instant like no, I'm good, or do you even contemplate? Or you're not at this point. I, your mind's made up. You don't want nothing to do. With I it. don't want nothing to do with it at mm -hmm. all, at all. Good. And I got hit for a urine that night again. Wow. And I'm like, all right. And it was two different people. Mm -hmm. So if it was the same person, I would have put two and two together. Like, Thinking he's are you to trying to set up? me mm -hmm. up, dude? Seriously, what are you getting out of this? But it wasn't. Thank God. And uh. I was like, I'm all set. I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, and I went to uh, Shirley Medium January 11th, 2008. January 11th, 2008. Yeah. And I uh, was in OU for a little while. I went to, um, I stayed in OU for a little while. And still, you know, Billy B was down there then. And, you know, God rest his soul, Patrick O'Brien. Um, Good people mm -hmm. doing the right things. Yeah. You know, always old school gangster. I know of him, man. You know, mm -hmm. and, but he had all the right intentions with the people that he surrounded himself with, you know, and I never had that father figure. Him and God rest his soul, Joe, both of them are passed, obviously. Joe Labriola. Mm. I don't know if you've heard that name no. before. All right. Joe, Joe was a good man, and uh, like I said, never had those father figures in my yeah. life. What kind of things did you learn from these guys? That one, you know, you can teach an old dog new tricks, mm -hmm. all right? And that you're not defined by your crime. Mm -hmm. You're defined of who you've made yourself as a man now. And uh, Joe taught me a lot about patience. These, these are guys that I haven't been around with since the early 90s right. that, you know, are doing the right things. They're older now. They're in the 60s and 70s, you know. They're mm -hmm. waning down. But get a guy in a headlock, ah, you're coming to church tonight, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's what I needed. They gave me that nudge. Listen, start going to groups, Josh, right? Sign up for every program. They did. They made me realize that just because I'm doing this life bid, educate yourself, expand your horizons. You know, Joe wrote a book. You know, I mean, wow. he was a good man. They're both good men, and you know, and 
I got moved to, and this is what Billy really respected. I got moved, I got moved to his unit and, you know, it's the, you know, it's the aggressive block, not the aggressive, it's somewhat of aggressive block. And there's a way to say, like, sometimes they have certain units, like when people get out the hole, they might send them to this yes, block. Or the, yes, like yes, yes. Yeah. And, you know, I had a real good sell, uh, bunky, Dennis Reddy, cowboy, and uh, I was telling him, I have, a, I have a real good friend that lives in another unit. Mm -hmm. You know, he's uh, uh, Bryce Noonan, he's out, he's doing a second, he's out now. And I saw what he was doing. Mm -hmm. I was sawing the goodness in him, right? How he's changed and he knows, you know, one, he wasn't fake it to make it. He knows he has to get parole, mm -hmm. but he he has to change and he was doing it. And I said, uh, I said to Dennis, I said, I'm going to go to the Super tomorrow and ask him to see if I can get moved to the block with, with Bryce. And he's like, do it. Do what you need to do because, you know, you would hang out with guys, you know, and they're not really, you know, you have your acquaintances mm -hmm. and then you have your, your crew, your good, solid friends. Right. The acquaintances, if you walked away, the daggers are getting thrown <laughs> in your back, yeah. you know, yeah. and they're just fugazis. Yeah. And uh, I was tired. Of of, I was tired of being around it. So I went to the super who used to be a captain back in the day in Walpole. And I looked at him. I said, listen, can you move me to this block? And he goes, why? I said, I need to be around positivity. And his mouth dropped. <laughs> He's like, what? I said, yeah. I said, I'm tired of being around the negative bullshit. And he says, Josh, don't make me regret this. Mm -hmm. And the very next day, I got moved to the unit. Like I said, off and running. You know, um, I signed up for uh, Project Youth again. Mm -hmm. Got denied because of my past history. So like, why did you want to do Project Youth? Did you think it was important to, to talk to the kids? Talk to the kids? 100%. Because you weren't making good time. You're, making, you're doing no, a natural I wanted like, to, I wanted. I wanted to do right by somebody mm -hmm. if one kid heard my story mm -hmm. and said wow then it's all good then yeah it, I, I'm, I'm making a cause I'm, I'm making something happen almost like there's a purpose behind yes. you know yes what and you're going through. i got denied because mm -hmm. of my past history so yeah. i stayed in that block for a little while um and then 2000 in 2009 i was i was having a conversation with amy and she was talking about uh graham versus florida it was mm -hmm. a juvenile I don't remember the specific details of it. And you're still but, at Shirley at this yeah, time? Yeah, and this medium. is down in Florida. And she's like, you know, this could pertain to you guys, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the time, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no, it isn't. It's not going to happen like that. Yeah. You know, and, and then I think in 2012, you know, right now we're in the life is blocked now in 2012. They moved us all in together, me, Billy, okay. Joe Lab, Mikey Skenna, right? Bo Boogie. And they There's were purposely just, moving people yeah, with they life moved, sentences there. Well, yeah. Or, um, the, uh, or it just so Deputy happens y'all ended The Deputy Super, okay. Karen Donato, made oh, yeah. this block gotcha. happen. Okay, gotcha. And there's only 60 of us in the unit. There's 60 cells, so everybody has their own gotcha. cells, you mm -hmm. know? And she specifically got older numbers. Whoever had the oldest number had the best shot of getting in, you know? And uh, we had a good crew, you know? I mean, one guy... For our first Christmas in the unit, you know, he made a paper Christmas tree, put it out on the table. Mm -hmm. Everybody made stockings for mm -hmm. everybody in the unit, and everybody donated. Put whatever, the honey yeah, buns, yeah. whatever, right? And to make it, you know, because yeah, a lot yeah. of guys are in there that are going to die in prison. Yeah. It made it feel like Christmas. Mm. In prison. Yeah. It Usually was, it's just another day. And you're, exactly, you know? you know, and we did that for, what? We did that for three straight years we mm -hmm. did that, you know? And guys were, a lot of guys who were really cantankerous, right? Mm -hmm. You could see them light up <laughs> when they got to open, you know, oh, wow, huge stuff. Ah, granted, it's cookies and honey buns, but, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting something on Christmas when they don't have any family. Yeah, it's important you know? to make the most of a bad situation well, in there, you know, for exactly, sure. Exactly, yeah. you know, and... You know, you'd have guys that would literally come from other units to say, you guys ain't got a tree and everything, right? <laughs> With lights on it, the whole nine yards. Yeah, we do. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, 2012, I think Miller versus Alabama came okay. down and Miller Miller won it. It was unconstitutional to sentence some somebody under 18 to life without parole. That was the beginning that I was like, wow. I'm hoping something happens up here, mm -hmm. you know, and... Were you scared to get, like, a false sense of hope? 
Or oh, absolutely. Just, yeah. Yeah, because I wasn't, you know. Because it would be almost like you get this hope and then, and then bang, the hope goes down. It's almost like getting resentenced. Yeah, I getting, punched, getting yeah. sucker punched, yeah. you know. And I thought about that for a little while. Like, you know, I remember in 2003, we, I put in the Rule 30. And it was like, that's your last ditch effort. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this can happen. This can happen. And then within a few months, denied. Yeah. And mm. the, 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 the wind punch. was taken out of the sails. I was like, you got to be kidding me, right? I didn't realize. I heard Greg Dayachenko was getting ready to do something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on Christmas Eve of 2013, you know, the law came down for, for the guys in Massachusetts. Dayachenko, Dayachenko won his case. And there was 68 of us. So what's the next step for you? Does a lawyer get in contact with you? You know what's crazy is that, that I already, the year before, like six months before, I was already in contact with a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Her name's Erica Kushner. I was already, you know, she's like, something's in the works, something's mm -hmm. in the works. You know, let's, you know, let's see where this goes. And when the law changed, we started working on it. She wanted me to wait. You know, I could have waited until 2004. 15 to put in mm -hmm. I said because I have so much time in mm -hmm. you know whoever had the most time in at the time can request for a parole hearing I thought I was ready mm -hmm. you know and we went I think November 16th 2014 was my first hearing mm -hmm. and you know we'd go over the questions and you know are you excited about this? I am. Up to it? I am. I am. I am. I was wicked nervous, mm -hmm. wicked nervous, thinking I, not that I thought that I would get parole, but I thought I can handle what they're going to bring at me because mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of uh, programs. There's a uh, program called Men's Work. Mm -hmm. It's like a Jericho circle, and it's all life is in there, and the guy who runs it is a volunteer. His name is Blaze. He, he really put the, the fire under my feet. Mm -hmm. You know, like, this is what you need to do. You need to deal with, you know, your trauma. And I thought I was. And, you know, within a, within a couple of minutes of the hearing, when after I did my opening statement, it literally, like, the wind just got knocked out of my sails. Mm. I felt I got rope-a-doped. I was on the ropes. I was getting, I was getting you know, yeah. blasted by every member on that board. Mm -hmm. And... uh what really was the, 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 the clincher in that hearing that, that killed me? Because I never knew Mr. McLean. That was mm -hmm. the victim the of victim. our crime. Yeah. I never knew him. And I got to learn when, when his family spoke. And uh, I got to learn a lot about him. And, and rightfully so, they have every right. Mm -hmm. You know, they thought I was dying in prison. You know, now I have a chance at this moment. Mm -hmm. And their anger is justifiable. Mm -hmm. And I just slunched. I'm, I'm handcuffed to shot. I'm just, I was just mm -hmm. slunching in the like, really? Yeah. This is really happening right now? And, you know, that made the news. Okay. You know, and I remember, you know, leaving the, leaving the parole hearing, just bawling in the back of the, one of the holding rooms, just bawling my eyes out. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, what the, you know, you thought you had it. You went in there with... Not an air of cockiness, just a little bit of confidence. Mm -hmm. And within minutes, it, that confidence mm -hmm. was gone. And uh, I remember coming back to the unit, walking down the walkway. It was, it was supper time on, so everybody's walking to chow. And I hear a guy go, dude, weren't you just on TV? I went, what? All right, go back into my unit. And we have two, two screens on the TVs. We have our own TVs in our rooms, but we mm -hmm. have screens. Yeah. And I look, and I see my face on the TV. And my buddy Bryce. Was it like an old picture? Or was, no, it, it was, was from the pro here. Yeah, okay, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. And uh, my buddy Bryce was at the top of the stairs. He said, come here, bud. I go up there and I literally, Bobby, I collapsed. I, held, I just bawled mm. my eyes out, dude. Yeah. You know, because it was just, it was, it was a lot to take in, you know, because I never thought, you know, I would ever have a chance right. of ever walk, ever having a parole hearing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was wicked emotional. So from I got a four year setback, and uh, how long until you're kind of like getting ready for the next one? Is it well? I was always, I was uh, no. Well, I didn't. Right I know. Like we'll get a next. I got time. well. Well, I didn't think I would get it. I was like, you know, I have but, a lot of work to do. I got yeah, to go to the CRA, yeah. Yeah. which I didn't want to do. But mm -hmm. 
I had to, mm -hmm. which was, you know, I'll be honest with you, I've done a lot of time. That was a brutal six months to do. Why? Is this so program based? No, that, but I didn't mind that because it, it he gave me, it's like the Spectrum one runs a CRA, right? Okay. And I got to learn a lot about substance abuse, mm -hmm. you know, and that's when I started going to AA because I never really was AA. My AA was the church, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I, I didn't, you know, one, they, they, they paired me with a good bunkie. Because he wasn't a drug user, didn't make homebrew, right? Mm -hmm. He was drug trafficking he's in for. We stayed roommates the whole time for six months. But mm -hmm. it was being out of my element, mm -hmm. out of the unit I just come from, mm -hmm. being around all lifers to yeah. guys that are doing, you know, a small bit here, medium right. bit here. And all they're in there for is a good time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you want to get drugs in prison, you can. Well, that's the place to go, right? You know, and it wasn't tempting. It was the fact, you know, I had one guy Did offer me. Did you just me. like not like the the hypocrisy? Yeah, kinda. yeah. Like, I don't, you know, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. And if I tell you I'm doing this, then I'm doing that. Right. You know, I don't want to. I'm not gonna BS you. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna. You know, like you said, it's, it's just a bunch of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. You know, you're faking the move and talking in programs and then you know you're going back and sniffing a, a, right, a thing yeah. of suboxone you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's just just it wrong for you but you did complete it oh absolutely did they send you back to the block with, oh yeah with yeah yeah immediately with, immediately yeah, i made sure once i got that certificate let's go so let's go. what is when does the minimum come is, is that not until you get a parole and then they move well you, you, right you, then at that in 2015 or 14 they were they were saying that juveniles can go to a minimum before that parole hearing. Okay. But they weren't really doing it. It was a rarity. Mm. So on and paper, like technically you can. But every six luck. months I got to go to a class board. And it's a mini parole hearing. And I mean, it's like a two and a half hour class board hearing. And uh, every, I had, I had literally eight straight 3-0 votes from Shirley Medium to go to a minimum. And I kept on getting di denied by uh, uh, classification in Milford, wow. the headquarters, saying, needs more programming. Mm. And I have a bazillion certificates that I've done already. It was discouraging, yeah. but they don't want to clash with the parole board. Yeah. You know, and uh, in 2018, I went and I was like, okay, this, was, this hearing, went, it went better. I waited a, almost 11 months for my decision. And they gave me a three-year setback. All right. Okay. You are, that's already it's, a year it, now. So yeah, like, so I see them in two years. But the fact that they went from four to three. Does time start to slow uh, slow down now that this, or does it more break it up? It when broke you, it up. It did break it up. Okay. The one good thing about it is I got involved. Excuse me, mm -hmm. man. Sorry about that. That's 2016, right. I got involved. We, we we had the dog program. Oh, brought nice. In. Yeah. And training a dog, I didn't really have to. Think about anything else because I'm taking care. I'm responsible mm -hmm. for for a life here. Yeah. You know what I mean. So that kept my mm -hmm. focus on other things and not thinking about time. Gotcha. You know. So fast forward. In you know, front of the parole board. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't as hard as the first one. Are you, you know, still a little still... skeptical now, getting denied, even though. Oh, well, it was have only all one deny. Oh, it was the one. No, okay. the one. And then I went again in 2008, got denied, and I saw him in 2021. Oh, okay. And uh, I was like, all right, maybe I thought it was going to be on Zoom, because mm -hmm. obviously, because of COVID and everything. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, they just bypass. They just allowed guys to start going to hearings. I'm like, oh man. Mm -hmm. But the pro hearing went well, nice. you know, and I was like, wow, there's a shot, there's a shot. So when I got my decision, I was already classed to go to Pawnville in mm -hmm. 2022. They, they, they came in in 2022, uh, Kelly Hastings calls me out. She's like, listen, you're going to a minimum. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I went September 7th of 2022. And I'm going to see, they already gave me a one year setback from parole. Yeah. So I was seeing them November... I think I was seeing him November 30th. It was either November 1st or November 30th I was seeing him. Mm -hmm. The last day, of, the first or last day of the month. And because they gave me a one-year setback, you know, 
a part of me was like, yeah, they're gonna. This is something. Something's gonna get swept under the rug, mm. you know. And I'm not gonna try to sound cocky. Oh, I got it. I got it. You know. But everybody else around me was saying that, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, if it happens, it happens, you know. And uh, my my growth as a human being and a man, I believe, one helped me get parole mm -hmm. because the change that I made in my life. Because I could have just spiraled out and gone a different avenue. But something in me wanted to do good. Mm -hmm. I was so grateful when I got the parole. Yeah. I remember we came back. We used to, I was in the automotive school at, at Pawnville. And I'm waiting for the decision. you know. And I got a few good guys that are in the school with me. And they're mm -hmm. like, you know, I see the inter in institutional parole lady come by, and she's like, Josh, when you're done, because every time we come back from automotive, we got a strip. Yeah. And wait in line, yeah, whatever. Nice. And she says, is what it is, yeah. right? She goes, I need to see you afterwards. I was like, and all like a few of them, good friends of mine are like, dude, you got it. You got it. I was like, all right, I hope so. But yep. I said, it's kind of soon, mm -hmm. you know, but usually if it's sooner, it's always usually a positive thing. Okay. And uh, I remember being in her office and I looked out the window at the door and all oh, crew, guys I've known for a long time, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, they're genuinely like, what, 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 what? you got it? You don't right. got it? You know, and I came out and I got it. And my buddy Dylan, I bawled on. I just, nice. I just bawled, you oh. know, and it felt good. Incredible. You know, yeah. and I was like, but what's crazy, I went back to my room, and uh, that night when we locked in, I started bawling. I was, I was happy, mm -hmm. but I was... Nervous? Scared. Nervous, scared, apprehensive, and uh, did I, do I really deserve this? Mm. The guilt, you know? And I thought about Mr. McLean and his family, and I'm like... Mm. You know, and I felt that a couple of days after I did get released. Yeah. Am I really deserving of this? You know? Right. And I think a part of me, the guilt's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Forgiving myself for this is, it's a lifelong process that I don't think is ever going right. to leave me. You know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, Do you think you're the same person you were when you went in? Absolutely not. Like, it'd be like Absolutely being a stranger. Not. Absolutely not. I'm 100%, you know, a different man. Where do you think you grew the most? You know, when I left Walpole. To get out of that environment yeah, was very cause, helpful. Yeah, because, you know, like I said, prison, you know, it's a world within a world. Yeah. And I... You know, to get out of that and just, like I said, it was just, it was like the weight was lifted off the shoulders because you always want to do right by the guys you, you run with and you hang with, yeah. you know. Oh, Josh, be the peak man. Do the solid thing. Right. And, you know, don't get me wrong, right? I'm always, you know, I, I was always, you know, a stand-up person. So I've been told, right? Right. You know, do the right thing by guys even after I changed, mm -hmm. you know. And I had to cut ties with a lot of those dudes. Yeah. Literally cut ties, you know. And I was rele I was a, I was a release of those chains of being the robot yeah. into being Josh, mm. you know. And I had, like you said, I had to get out of Walpole, yeah. Yeah. you know. Absolutely. And I was blessed to have all... You know, people are baffled when I say I've been around nothing but positive people mm -hmm. in the last 20 something years that I be they believe in me, I believe in them. You know, a great support system. Yeah. I can't, you know, I can't thank the people that are in my lives that have helped me grow, you know, because it takes Absolutely. a village. 
you know, Absolutely. you know, not just for me, but for for anybody. If you're going to be there for one another, you know, mm -hmm. and Certainly. I do bless Jesus Christ for this man. Yeah. That you know, yeah. that 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 really was you know one of the other changes. You know, I found Christ. Yeah. You know, and give the gl glory to God, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Do you know, sure. there's, there's, it's, there's an acronym I use. You know the word grace, mm -hmm. right? God's reward at Christ's expense. Mm. Yeah. You know, and that's really what it is. What uh, would you say for someone who's never did a day, man? That is the worst part about prison? The loneliness when the door closes. And you're by yourself. Because mm -hmm. yeah. now you can't escape your thoughts. You know, and, you know, there's some people that couldn't escape their thoughts and have taken their lives. Yeah. You know, but there have been some, a lot that, you know, have persevered, you know, and, you know, think about, you know, whether it's a little bit of time or a lot of it, a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do with that time? Exactly. You know, don't don't think about that. You know, what can you change to make not only your life better, mm -hmm. but to maybe better someone else's time. Yeah. For the next person that's gonna be walking in your shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, small story because I know we're almost done. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You know, um. 2010, a kid came in named, named Johnny Chadwick. And I got told, oh, Josh, you got a Gloucester kid here, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, get introduced. He says, oh, you know Dave Collins? I said, yeah. Said, oh, it's my, my stepdad. And I asked him, I said, is your mom Tammy? He said, yeah. I said, dude, I held you when you were a baby in 1986. Wow. And he's doing a little bit of time. So I went right to the, the CPO, the caseworker in the unit, who I knew real well, and I said, sign him up for every program. Mm -hmm. She went, I said, listen, here's his con number, sign him up for every program. He needs this, yeah. not only just for the good time, he needs this. He was pissed, <laughs> he was like, dude, I, I said, listen, you gotta do it. You got a family out there, bro. Mm -hmm. You need to do better not only for yourself, but for them, yeah. you know, and we've, you know, he's been out a long time. Nice. We've talked a few times and he thanked me for it. He's like, thank yeah. you. Cause if you didn't do that, I would have done the entire bid, you know? And he said, I appreciate it for it. You know, I don't want, you know, you have to pay it forward. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? And this is going to sound great, great, probably a little crazy. I'm grateful for my experiences mm -hmm. so I can pay it forward. Yeah. You know, I'm grateful for whatever's happened in my life. He had a plan mm -hmm. and I'm sitting here with you now. Yep. And you know This is our way too to pay it forward. Absolutely. Now. And you know, I was I was I was going out of prison horizontally. Mm. Meaning horizontally I was going I was, I was going. I was leaving in. A, I was leaving in a box. Oh, okay, got you. All right, you know, and that's not happening. So every chance I get, I, I, you know, I'm in the low recovery house in Tuxbury. You know, we do the dual program where it's every two weeks. It's a different set of people that have gotten the DUIs, mm -hmm. and this is their one chance. Yeah. You know, I tell my story, and I talk to them. Yeah. And maybe I can hit one of them off, and you know. You know, their first time ever getting in trouble with the law for drinking or something, and mm -hmm. you know, to like you said, to pay it forward, to help out as much as I can. Yeah. Why do you think your story has value, and how how can it help somebody else? The fact that because I came in so young, mm -hmm. right, that the one value of it that will deter someone from getting themselves jammed up is that we never know what path we're going to go on. Mm -hmm. But if they can learn from the fact that, if anything, you can persevere through anything. Yeah. You know, I just gave you a glimpse of my right. childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, there's a bigger picture there that we didn't get into. Mm -hmm. And without the camp, you and I right, will have right, a talk. Right. Absolutely, one day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, show them that 
you can persevere from anything. Don't be afraid yeah. to ask, you know, if you've had something happen to you when you're younger, don't be afraid to ask for some help. Mm. Say, listen, this is what happened, you know? Because mm -hmm. if you hold it in, it festers and it makes things worse in your life. Yeah, and for sure. I'm living proof of that. So how long have you been out now? October 19th, 2023. October 19th. So yeah. what advice would you give to somebody that just say they came home today, similar situation as you? Baby steps. Mm -hmm. And know that you're not alone. Because if you just got out, obviously you have hopefully, you know, a good lawyer and maybe family. Mm -hmm. If not, find yourself at an AA meeting. Yeah. Right? And if you get frazzled, hopefully you have somebody in your life you can talk to and know that you can make it. You just got to believe in yourself. Don't let the outside life of everything that's going on, because everything's going to be coming at you at, in a whirlwind. And it's going to be a little, you know, offsetting. Mm -hmm. You're going to get, you know, nervous about it and uh, take a deep breath. Mm. And know that you're you're worthy of this release. What what's been the biggest adjustment that you've had to adjust to coming out? Is it technologies certainly different from it, when you went you in? You know what? People are a lot different. That the the I'm always polite anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think I'm too polite. That's one of the first things I noticed about going to state prison, though. There is that respect. You yes. more called polite, but it's just more well, respect, respect. Being thing. respect, yeah. 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 Um, I see, I see a lot of rudeness. Mm -hmm. What's crazy? If someone bumps into me, and if I bump into them, I immediately say, "Excuse me," mm -hmm. and I don't even care. If they bumped into me, I'm still gonna say, "Oh, excuse me." Right. The the technology, the phone, I've gotten used to because in the last few years we've had tablets. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that's important for that to be going on uh -huh. in there too. Yeah. It does kind of help. Yeah, it does. It out. does. It it helps a little bit. It's not the same, but it no. gives you the basics at least how to navigate kind of through. Oh, I 100%. mean, so even me with an iPhone, man. I've always had Android. If I get on an iPhone, I might not be able to yeah. get you to YouTube. <laughs> you know what I'm I got saying? an like, Android. I got an Android. Um, other obstacles. It just you know, give yourself time to breathe. Mm -hmm. If you don't, don't come out the gate running. You're going to immediately want this and do this. And you want to you wanna soak it all in. Mm -hmm. Take baby steps. Because yeah. if you don't, you're going to get yourself lost. Yeah. It all it's easy in. to overwhelm yourself. Exactly. What kind of things are you looking forward to now that you're out? Well, I look forward to the, the you know, I've already the big holidays came. Mm-hmm. You know, my first Thanksgiving, first time nice. I ever copped a turkey, you know. Simple um, things. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, spending time with family. You know, I, Amy's my family. Yeah. Caitlin, Rainey, and Tannis mm -hmm. are my family. Yeah. You know, I've known them my entire life. I enjoy every moment I spend with them. I cherish it. You know, our first Christmas. Some people don't like celebrating Christmas. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> so, you know... To do that and to open up presents and to just just cherish those moments, yeah. you know, it's 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 absolutely beautiful. What are some of your um, short term or long term goals? If well, the short term one is to um, one graduate the Lowell Rem uh, Recovery House, get a part time job while I'm still there, mm -hmm. which is in the works, probably starting next week. Nice. The long term goal is to start up, you know. The program that I'm involved with, Thrive Community, it's in Lowell, run by Kim Yassir. It's a great program. They help guys out with reentry. She's about to get a puppy for the program to have as a comfort dog for when people do come off the streets mm -hmm. to come in. They're a little bit more at ease. So that's my first, my, my foot in the doorway of training. Nice. I'm going to train this dog for him and then eventually start my own business of training dogs for sober houses so like i said when someone comes in they're a little apprehensive about coming in mm -hmm. and you know you, you you can't you can't get bummed out with a labrador dude right. you can't bro <laughs> yep. you can't man. you yep. know 
Yeah, animals uh, are great. Yeah, yeah. They so are. just to clarify, how much time did you have to do straight? How much time did you do straight? 35 years and 19 days. 35 years, 19 days. What have you learned about yourself in those 35 years, 19 days? That I'm resilient. That's it. I mean, yeah. that says it all. And yeah. I appreciate you coming up here, telling your story. All of these stories have value. And it, like you said, if one person can learn something or maybe hear something that prevents them from ending up in similar situations, then it's all worth it, Amen. in my opinion. Amen, so, Bobby. I appreciate you coming up here. If there's anything that you wanted to touch on or some last closing words, here's your chance. I uh, I just appreciate you have letting mm -hmm. me come on here and, 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 and tell my story, you know. And uh, oh, I think this is a great cause, you know, because, you know, you know, I love the fact we're not glorifying anything, mm, no. you know. We want to get those stories out to let it be known, you know, that, you know, reform is real. Yes. You know, a man can change, you know. I'm living proof of that, yeah. and I greatly appreciate you, man. Yeah, and thank you I for mean, coming. I, you heard you know. heard it from the man himself, my guy Josh. I'm Bobby B. Luke. This is the Bounce Back Podcast, guys. It is what it is. What's next is what you make it. On that note, we're out of here. Thanks again, Josh. You got that, bro. Appreciate thank it, you, man. man. Bounce back. You got a moment when they see you.